Hi everyone and welcome to today's video where we're going to be doing a guide for the Ottomans for U4 1.35 Domination. So the Ottomans are a nation that start off owning half of the Balkans and about half of Anatolia and as you all know in the hands of the player they are the most powerful nation in the game and since they've been very heavily updated in 1.35 domination receiving changes to their national ideas changes to their missions getting one of the best mission trees in the game getting new unique government reforms and new unique government mechanics the Ottomans have become more powerful than ever in the hands of the player even though they are weaker than ever in the hands of the AI. But make no mistake, the Ottomans are still one of the easiest nations in the game for newer players and that's why I recommend them so much. Even with all of these changes, you will continue to have a great campaign as the Ottomans, so don't be afraid about the complexity of their gameplay in 1.35. As the Ottomans, of course, we have the unique Ottoman government tier 1 government reform, which is super, super powerful. We have so many unique abilities. We can place Pasha's recruit Janissaries, which are a special unit type. The ruler has a harem, which enables us to choose various, very good heirs we also have the decadence meter harm events the janissaries estate the super powerful al subject type along with your legitimacy unjustified demands max absolutism and gov cap bonuses and the tier 2 def shirme system government reform is also super powerful ottoman ideas are some of the best in the game starting off with plus five percent discipline and plus three tolerance of heathens finishing off with plus 25 percent land force limit then we got minus 25 percent ccr and a promoted culture manpower recovery speed plus 20 percent cav combat plus 15 percent tax and reform progress go national rest trade efficiency ship costs and navy tradition these super powerful ideas these super powerful government reforms this amazing mission sheet and all the other unique abilities make the ottomans the most powerful nation in the game so sit back relax and learn what you need to do as the ottomans all right all right here we are as the ottomans and as you all know we do need to kickstart our gameplay by conquering the province of constantinople and making it our capital and from there we can move on to conquer this entire region everything over here almost all of arabia pretty much all of Egypt in two wars, everything over in the Maghreb, and maybe even in Iberia and the Horn of Africa. So to get all of that started, we need to take a look at our missions right here, and we need to unlock this mission. As we can see, we need two generals, and we need to gain the event, the victory over the Varna Crusade, which will happen immediately right after the start. And we also need to do this mission, 90% force limit, so we gain perma claims on every Turkish province in Anatolia and the Mashriq, which is pretty much right here. And we also need to train the Janissaries, which means recruiting 10 Janissary regiments so we can get some morale. So these are the three missions we will do immediately. But first, let's go into our national decisions right here, adopt the title of Khalifa, denounce sect practices, and enforce religious unity. Then we can go over into our estates and summon the Diet. You can pick whichever agenda is best for you. Then we're going to give the Ulama, Religious State, Clerical Advisory Council, Religious Diplomats, and Clerical Education. Then we're going to give the Umera, Primacy of the Umera, Increased Levies, and Aristocratic Counselors. Then we're going to give the Merchant Guilds, Land of Commerce, Patronage of the Arts, Commercial Advisory Board, and Indebted to the Merchant Guilds. Then you can see that the Dimi, which is a unique Muslim estate, start off with guaranteed Dimi autonomy, which means none of the Orthodox or Catholic or Coptic provinces that we're going to conquer will give us any penalties to religious unity. So that's great. We were going to give this out anyway, so it's good that we start with it. Furthermore, we're going to give the Dimi higher Dimi taxes, and then we get to the new unique estate for the Ottomans, the Janissaries, which is super, super powerful, and it has lots of great abilities, and as you can see, lots of them give us less loyalty, but we do want these guys to be loyal and not that influential, and it will be a little tricky to manage these guys later on, but in the early game, it's not going to be a problem at all. So, first we're going to give them Sultan-appointed Agas, for yearly army tradition and land leader shock plus one. Then we're going to give them ensure discipline training, which gives them another plus 5% discipline, of course only to the Janissaries. Then we're also going to give them loyalty to the Sultanate, which gives us 25% loyalty equilibrium, which is super, super good for us. And we'll also give them the strict Defshirme system, which means every heathen province, basically the Orthodox, Catholic, and Coptic provinces that we're going to conquer, and maybe something else over in India, will give us plus 20% manpower and plus 15% local defensiveness. This is historically accurate. And then we're going to seize land. That's the estate setup done. Next, we're going to go into our rivals, and I recommend rivaling the Mamluks, of course, and then you can rival Austria and Hungary. That's done for now. And then we can go into our advisors, and it's time to hire some advisors. As we can see, we already focus on mill right here. And as we can see, for this mission right here, the Guns of Urban, we need a mill advisor at scale 2. 
and we gained four cannons in 1444. Of course, they won't be used in battle, but they will help with sieges. If we hire the advisor Urban, we also gain them basically for free for 10 years, although it's not really necessary to wait for that guy to show up, and it's much better to get this mission immediately. So what we're going to do is hire this half-cost level 1 adamant advisor. As we can see, he's twice as cheap as this other guy, so go ahead and hire him. Get a diplorep or improve relations level 1 dip advisor. I don't have those guys, so I'm just going to get this straight efficiency guy. And of course, get a skill 2 mill advisor. This is the guy that's available for me, so I am going to hire him. Whichever guy is a skill 2 guy, go ahead and hire him. And then you will be able to take the mission Guns of Urban, where we gain 4 cannons. There we go. Now we need to work on these three missions right here. And of course, for this one, we do need to unpause, but we also need another general. And of course, as the Ottomans, we already start off with one general. You can put him in charge of this army right here, for example. And then you can go ahead and recruit a general for this other army down here. And there we go. Now we just need to unpause to be able to take this mission. But we also need to do this mission right here. So we need to recruit 10 Janissary regiments. And the way you recruit Janissaries is you can just click on your state right here. And as we can see, you can conscript Janissaries for Janissaries will cost 12 mil points, but they also use up manpower. So what we're going to do is this right here. There we go. There's four of them. And then you can recruit four more in Macedonia, for example. And then you can do two more right here in Celestria. And just like that, we can take the mission, train the Janissaries, which requires us to have 10 Janissary regiments. And we gain morale of armies for 10 years and the Janissaries gain loyalty. There we go. We took it. But as we can see, these guys start off at just 100 and they still need to reinforce. So by keeping all of these guys around that we just recruited, we're going to lose all our manpower. So I do recommend keeping a little bit of them around because we will need them. But you can simply go ahead and delete these two from Celestria and these four from Macedonia. Just keep these four that recruited in Bulgaria up. And of course, then you can also take this mission, which gives us a permaclaim on every Turkish province in Anatolia and the Mashrik, which is right here. And because we've given the Janissaries two privileges already, we can also take the mission Janissary Privileges, where the event of the Janissaries happens, and we gain some Janissary Force Limit, Loyalty Equilibrium, and 25 mil points. There we go. So that's four missions done before we've even unpaused. Speaking of unpausing, there's something else we need to do before we do that. So you can take this army right here along with the four cannons and merge it just like that. And as you can see, it's a 12-4-4 right now. Then you can go ahead and tell the Janissaries to go here once they fill up, which is going to put us at 16-4-4. Then you can take eight of these infantry regiments right here from this smaller army, tell it to go over here, and then we're also going to recruit the, the free company over in Salonic and merge it with the smaller 5k stack right here. That might take us over force limit, but it's not a problem. Don't worry. Then we also have our navy right here. You can tell the three light ships to protect trade over in Constantinople and go home during war. And you can go in ahead and recruit a bunch more galleys. About 15 for now should be enough. Finally, you can go ahead and select a naval doctrine. And we do have a unique naval doctrine as the Ottomans, the Great Turkish Navy, which gives us plus 20% naval force limit and minus 10% ship cost. You could take that or you could go with free oarsmen. The choice is totally up to you. Both of these are really good. I'm going to go with the Great Turkish Navy for now. Now it's time to unpause and wait for this event. And there it is, just three days after unpausing, the event shows up and the die is cast. We gain 25 power projection and 100 splendor. And there we go, just like that. There's the aftermath of Varna and we can take this mission and we gain permaclaims on all of these areas right here. Additionally, there's the siege engineer Urban. You can go ahead and take this first option where you lose money and he becomes our advisor. He's a skill 2 guy that's 75% cheaper. You can go ahead and hire him once a month ticks by. Now we're waiting for December 11th. Now that a month has ticked by, it's time for us to declare our first war, and obviously it's going to be versus the nation of Byzantium. So what you're going to do is take this army right here that we put together, go ahead and merge it, and actually accidentally I made it a little bit bigger, so you can go ahead and take out four infantry regiments and one cavalry regiment and send them back down to this army, so it should be 24-4, this main army right here, and then you can go ahead and declare on Byzantium. They may have an ally by this point, someone like Serbia, Albania, Bosnia, Herzegovina, Wallachia, or Theodoro, you can just go ahead and white piece that ally or take money and war ups from them. We're only interested in Byzantium and Athens. So go ahead and declare a conquest for Constantinople and there's your first war started. You may want to keep your boats docked during this initial war. Once you can, also go ahead and Royal Mary Crimea, improve relations with them and curry favors. 
And to be exact, this is what your army should look like, 24-4, and over here, 6-4 with the 8k free company. With the southern army, of course, you're going to go down and siege Athens and Morea, and you can separate this army just like this, so you don't lose manpower while sieging Constantinople. There we go. 10 is about enough. In the initial war, this is what your diplomats should be doing. Curing favors and improving relations with Crimea and spying on Biz, so we get the sieges done a little faster. A couple of months after the game starts, you will gain the event, the internal power struggle, which basically informs us about the decadence system, which is right here. As we can see right now, it's zero, and it will continue to be zero for a foreseeable amount of time while the Age of Discovery lasts, but after that, it will start ticking up. Right now, as we can see, we're losing 0.91 a month, and right now, it increases from Janissary land ownership and average autonomy. When your galleys build up, you will be able to take the mission the Crescent Fleet, which gives us an Admiral with 50 tradition. Then, you can go ahead and put the Admiral in charge of this main navy right here, and you can go ahead and pop out the navy and fight the Byzantine navy. Once you defeat Byzantium, of course, you're gonna go ahead and full annex them, and that's our first war done. It is about 40 aggressive expansion, which may look like a lot, but it's not, since we're really not going to be fighting that many Orthodox nations. And that's our first war done. After finishing this war, we will be able to take the mission Make Constantinople Our Capital, which basically converts it to Turkish and Sunni, and we gain lots of development in it, along with stability. And of course, most importantly, we don't have to spend 156 admin points to core it. So, once this war is done, go ahead and take that decision, and just like that, we've become an empire as well. Then, you can go ahead and core up the remaining provinces you took from Byzantium and Athens. And as we can see, now we can take another mission, the City of the World's Desire, where an event happens, we gain tolerance of the true faith, Yulia legitimacy, and even more development along with dev discount and monthly devastation in Constantinople. Of course, you should go ahead and take that mission, and there we go, this shall be the beginning of our classical era. Now that our war with Byzantium is done, it's immediately time to start our next war where we need to finish off Epirus right here so we can go ahead and take the mission reign in Greece. So this is your second mission. Epirus shouldn't really have a strong ally at this point. The strongest nation they can be allied to is the Pope or Naples sometimes, but even then it's going to be super easy. Right here they're allied with Ragusa, a nation that we start off guaranteeing, and we want to get rid of that guarantee anyway since we're going to be fighting them. So there we go. That's your second war immediately on Epirus. You should gain around 10 favors with Crimea during this second war. You can immediately go ahead and trade favors for trust. We need to get them up to 60. Once you wrap up your first war with Byzantium, you can immediately tell one diplomat to improve relations with outraged countries. And now that I wipe peace Ragusa, I can go ahead and peace out Epirus, and of course you're gonna full annex Epirus as well. And there we go, there's our second war done. After you wipe out Byzantium and Epirus, you will be able to take the mission Reign in Greece, where every Greek province loses 100% local autonomy and 20 years of separatism, which is really strong since we have a lot of them, and we also gain a permaclaim on the entire region of the Balkans. Now that we've wrapped up Biz and Epirus and we've gotten claims on this, these guys over here are a little bit angry at us. So after two wars over here in the Balkans, we need to shift our focus over to Anatolia and conquer some of these provinces right here. And you can declare on whoever one you want out of these guys. Chandar, Karaman, Ramazan, Delkadir, it really doesn't matter in which order you go, although you should aim to gain a border with the Mamluks as soon as you can. What I'm gonna do in my game right here is declare on Delkadir, and as we can see, they're allied to Hisan Kaifa and Ramazan which are these two nations. I'm also going to co-belligerent Ramazan, so I can full annex them as well, and with that, Shandar comes in, and I'm also going to co-belligerent them. I really don't care about his and Kaifa right now, since I don't border them, we'll deal with them later. But, with this war, I'll wipe out Dilkadir, Ramazan, and Shandar in one war. So there we go, I'm just going to declare further capital, and that's your next war over in Anatolia started. You should aim to take these four guys out in one to four wars, depending on your opportunities. While you're in this war, you should be able to trade some more favors for trust with Crimea, and with that, by doing it twice, you will be able to take the mission Crimean Destiny, and remember, it's important to complete it while they're an ally of ours, so later when that event happens, they become our vassal. And there you go, you can go ahead and take the mission Crimean Destiny. After you're done currying favors with Crimea, you can tell another one of your diplomats to improve relations with outraged country. And once you've defeated whoever you're fighting in Anatolia, you can go ahead and full annex them and take all of their money, which is what I'm gonna do right here with Ramazan, Delkadir, and Chandar. And you should continue fighting these guys, the four initial guys that I mentioned, until you can take this mission right here, conquer the Balix, which gives us 100 admin points, and permaclaims on the rest of Anatolia. So, after you take this mission, you're done fighting these guys for a little bit, and it's time to shift our focus back 
to the Balkans. While building spy networks and stuff like that, you may notice that in covert actions, we have a justify invasion option right here, which will give us a special Ottoman campaign of conquest CB against the nation that we're spying on if we have 30 spy network. But don't worry, there's a reason we're not using it right now. The nations that we fought so far, we're not really aiming to get that CB against them and we already got perma claims. So we'll be using that later on via missions and stuff like that. But everything over here and over here that we got these perma claims on, we should aim to conquer directly. Pretty much all of the Balkans and Anatolia. After that, we'll deal with subjects and ailets. After you took this mission, it's time to chill a little bit and recover our main power and let aggressive expansion lower a little bit, just while these provinces here that we took in Anatolia are coring, and after that, we'll focus on some of the nations over here. And you may be aware that we're losing quite a bit of money up until this point, but don't worry, that's completely normal. After you've taken Admin Tech 4, you can go ahead and state up Morea right here as well and full core it later on, and something else that we're gonna do with these states over in the Balkans is assign Pashas. As we can see right here, we need to assign Pashas to 50 provinces, that are not in the Levantine culture group, which is of course this culture group, and historically the Pashas were established over in the Balkans, and they have been changed in this latest update. As we can see, we gain plus 20% minimum autonomy in those provinces, which you might think is bad, but later when we take this mission, we can lower it to just 10, and of course, minus 33% state maintenance, minus 0.1 monthly autonomy change, minus 20% governing cost, and plus 10% tolerance of heathens is really good, which means we'll get very little, if any, rebellions over in the provinces that we assign a Pasha to. So what I recommend is assigning a Pasha to Silistria right here, to Bulgaria, to Macedonia, to Northern Greece, and to Morea. And later we'll be assigning them in these other states up here that we conquer from Serbia, Albania, Bosnia, Herzegovina, Ragusa, Croatia, and Venice. Around this time, you should aim to build up your light ship fleet up to 10. When you get this event right here, convert Hagia Sophia into a mosque, you should of course repair it and transform it. We gain legalism, we gain prestige, ulema loyalty, it gets upgraded to tier 2, and we gain even more development in Constantinople. And there we go, now we can basically use it. Once you're done coring up everything you took in Anatolia after taking this mission right here, it's time to get back to our conquest in the Balkans. And as we can see, according to this mission right here, push into the north, we need 20 provinces out of these provinces that are highlighted to gain some very cool CBs on Hungary and Wallachia and Moldavia if they're independent. And to get those 20 provinces, here's what we're going to be getting them from. All of Serbia, all of Bosnia, all of Herzegovina, Albania, Ragusa, and these Venetian provinces. We won't be taking any provinces from Croatia or Hungary for now. So when it's time, simply go ahead and declare a war right here. It's either going to be versus Albania or Serbia, or if someone else has expanded over here, you can declare on them. What I'm going to do right here is declare on Serbia, and it is the best to fight them first, because that's how we're going to get the gold mine. And Serbia may have one or two allies right here, but we're not going to do anything with them. We're just going to white piece them, since we're aiming to full annex all of these guys one by one. So simply declare on whoever you want out of the nations that I mentioned over here in this region, and go ahead and full annex them, or take as much provinces as you can. I'm going to declare on Serbia. And after you defeat whoever you're fighting here, go ahead and full annex them, with the exception of if you're fighting Albania, of course, as you know, they're guaranteed by Venice, you should also aim to take these provinces from Venice in that war. So Zara, Spalato, Kataro, and Durazzo, those four provinces, along with the two from Albania, so you don't have to do another separate war versus Venice later. Of course, if you can't, you're just going to declare on Venice later, and you're going to take those provinces and the stuff they own down here. So it's really not a problem. But in my case, I'm fighting Serbia first, so I'm going to full annex them. You should aim to fight Serbia first as well, because like I said, the gold mine. And that's my war with Serbia done. Once again, you may think it's a lot of aggressive expansion, but it's not a problem. It's only with the Orthodox nations. After you fought Serbia, it's time to chill a little bit once again, and then we're going to get back to Anatolia and wipe out the final out of the four starting nations that are here. In my case, it's Karaman. Once you start getting your money in the positive, that should be after you take the gold mine, you should immediately start constructing buildings, and you should start off with marketplaces in all the center of trade and estuary provinces. Of course, starting with Constantinople. Once you've gotten your manpower back up a little bit after conquering a nation in the Balkans, it is time to finish off the four initial nations in Anatolia that we're supposed to fight. In my case right here, it's Kerman. So whoever you can, whoever is left for you, go ahead and fight them and full annex them. Their ally won't even join, so this will be a super easy war. While you're at a war with these guys and controlling their centers of trade, or after you've conquered them or built marketplaces, you will be able to take the mission A Maritime Presence, which requires you to have 10 light ships, which you should have, and 20% control over Aleppo, Alexandria, or Ragusa, one of those three. I have 20% control over Aleppo, and there's A Maritime Presence. We gain some local trade power and local dev discount. And once you're done fighting whoever you fought over here, of course, you're gonna go ahead and full annex them as well. And there we go. In one to three wars, you should have wrapped up all of the initial Anatolian bases 
Balix right here. Caraman, Chandor, Dulcadir, and Ramazan. Now, it's once again time to go back to the Balkans. As we can see, aggressive expansion is getting a little rowdy over here, but it's not a problem. Even though as the Ottomans we don't really need allies, around this point, about 10-ish years into the game, you could get an ally or two, and what I recommend is someone over here or over here, and then a nation over in Europe. You can get good relations with France through missions and stuff like that, so you should aim on allying them for sure, but a nation you can always get is of course Bohemia and there's no reason not to ally them. I'm also gonna go for Tunis right here, even though later we're gonna be conquering them. These are just temporary alliances, and of course Crimea is gonna become a subject. For your tier 2 government reform, aside from the usual options right here, we do have a unique one as the Ottomans that we're of course gonna be taking, and that is the Bifshirme system. This not only gives us plus 10% national manpower, minus 10% Umrah influence, plus 10% Janissary loyalty, which we want a lot, and plus 10% Janissary influence, but it also enables the Bifshirme mechanic ability which is this right here so for your tier 2 government reform take the Defshirme system and this is the system that we get and it's super super powerful here is the first option right here for 49 admin points we gain 10 percent ccr for 20 years and every owned heathen province also loses 10 percent local autonomy and gets less unrest and monthly devastation super super powerful then we have recruit new grand vizier which for 49 diplo points gives us a skill 3 diplo advisor that's 33 percent cheaper and we also gain plus one possible advisors and minus five percent diplo advisor cost and then we can also conscript heathen recruits which for 49 mil points gives us manpower recovery speed plus 10 percent and plus 25 percent vassal manpower contribution of course it's pretty obvious which one is the best at this point assign local pashas and of course this is what we're going to be taking right here in my game right now you should probably do the same since it is objectively the best of course you could immediately take all of them but it's totally up to you i am gonna do it since i'm pretty loaded on points after you take these provinces from Serbia, you should of course go ahead and full state them and then activate the Encourage Development State Edict over in this state right here. And of course, we're going to be diving Kosovo up to 10 production so we can make some nice income from gold. And there we go. I was pretty loaded on points so I could dev it up immediately. And we're not going to be assigning a Pasha right here. Of course, it gives us plus 20% local autonomy, not something we want when making money from gold. In fact, we should lower autonomy. But you should assign a Pasha over in Serbia. There we go. After chilling for a year or two, after wrapping up these initial guys in Anatolia, it's time to go back to the Balkans. I'm gonna go ahead and declare in Bosnia right here, and not co-belligerent Albania because I want to fight them separately from Venice, because as we can see, Venice has expanded a little bit, and it'll be tough to take provinces from them in that same war where we're gonna fight Albania. So right now, I'm just gonna go for Bosnia and maybe Albania. And now that I've defeated Bosnia and Albania, I'll be full annexing both of them even without Kobola drinking Albania and taking all of their money. And right now, for me to take this mission right here, I only need to take care of these two Herzegovinian provinces and then everything from Zara over to Durazzo. At this point, I can also take an age ability. And for your first age ability, the Ottoman age ability has actually been changed. Before domination, it was plus 33% siege ability or something like that, which enabled us to take down forts super, super fast. But that has pretty much been replaced with the four cannons we start with now so it's really really strong and even though plus one land leader siege is a unique option right here i still don't really think it's the best for our first stage ability so for your first stage ability i recommend justified wars we can take this one for our second one even though we'll lose out on some time using it after you take care of a couple of more nations in the balkans it's time to chill a bit and after that it will be time to start our campaigns versus the mamluks as we can see right here according to this mission defeat the mamluks we need to own six provinces out of the highlighted ones that you can see right here in order for us to later get the Ottoman invasion CB on the Mamluks, which will enable us to take all of this that the Mamluks own in just one war, after the initial war, of course, where we take five provinces. Now, if you've taken Eintab right here from Dulkadir, you will need to take five more provinces from the Ottomans, and one of them needs to be Damascus or Jerusalem. So we either need to take this one and this one and then four other provinces. Most likely, we're going to be taking the forts right here to make the next wars easier. But after you're done with some nations here, chill a little bit until everything is scored up, and then it'll be time for our first war versus the Mamluks. Around this point as well, you want to lower autonomy in some provinces that you can. It will have been increasing by now due to our low crownland ownership at the start. At this point, I'm buffing up my armies a little bit. I've added two more Janissary regiments to the main army, which is going to be 22-4-4, and I'm building up the smaller one too. It's going to be 14-4 along with the free company right now. 
Of course, you do need to spy on the Mamluks to get some claims on them, because conquering this right here doesn't give us claims that way, it forces us to go this way. And this is what the succession looks like in Ottoman games. Basically, you can choose out of three guys. In my case, this first guy is a 415, the second guy is a 165, and this fourth guy is a 542. And even though this isn't the guy with the most stats, he is the most balanced in my opinion, so that's why I'm gonna go with him. And if you're wondering why I have so many points, it's because I'm not really teching up until I get the Renaissance right here. This isn't a problem unless you fight someone with better miltech. So just be careful about that. Otherwise, you should wait as well until you embrace the Renaissance to get tech 5. I got miltech 5 though to help me beat up some of the other guys quicker. And whenever you're ready, go ahead and declare your first war on the Mamluks. I'm declaring in the 1460s right now. Of course, it can be done a lot earlier, maybe when you have a miltech advantage over them or something like that. But of course, you should play at your own pace. Don't rush things and be careful of aggressive expansion and your manpower. So whenever you're ready, check if they're not better miltech than you because you might have been saving yourself for the Renaissance and go ahead and declare on the Mamluks. Remember, in this first war, we only want five provinces from them, one of which will be Damascus or Jerusalem, most likely Damascus. So Maybe we're aiming to take something like this in our first war. No money, no war reps. I'll explain why later. And there's your first war with the Mamluks started. When you gain this event right here that relates to the Orthodox Church over in Constantinople, you have two options, and you can see right here that it changes the requirements for this mission based on what we pick. So if we choose this, we need two agendas from the Dimi and four privileges currently granted to them, or for this, we need two agendas for the Ulama and four privileges granted to them. And we can see the bonuses we also get. And we can see for this first one right here, we gain manpower in Orthodox countries like us, and we gain a Greek theologian later when we complete that mission. Or for this, right now we gain some money and base tax. Orthodox nations don't like us, and we gain more dev later on down here. I do think the second option is a little better, but of course you can go with whatever you want to. While I'm in this war, I took out some burger loans to embrace the Renaissance, and now that I've embraced it, I'm up to tech 5. And of course, when you get to admin tech 5, it will be time for your first idea group. And what better idea group to open up for a blobbing campaign rather than Diplo ideas. Diplomatic ideas will help us manage our Elliots and vassals later on, which we will have a ton of, so all around is great for that. These two additional diplomats and the plus 25% improved relations will help us avoid coalitions and improve relations with countries that may be mad at us. The Diplo advisor discount is great. The diplomatic relations we may not need, but it will come in handy. The Diplo rep will help us once again manage coalitions and annex subjects faster, and the minus 25% province war score cost will help us take more provinces in a single war. And of course, the Diplotech discount is great. What better opener than Diplo admin for a blobbing campaign? And of course, we're going to be going with Diplo. So, diplomatic ideas for your first idea group. And when you gain around 40 to 50% war score versus the Mamluks in your first war, basically, once you have enough war score to take these exact provinces right here, so Antioch, these three all the way to Damascus, and then Damascus, then go ahead and peace out. No money, no war reps, nothing else. We're not releasing Syria or anything like that, just these provinces. And that's your first war with the Mamluks looks done. Now that you've done this, you are able to take this mission right here, which is defeat the Mamluks. This gives us the Ottoman invasion CB on the Mamluks for 50 years, and if we use this against the Mamluks, we'll get a special event once we gain control of Cairo that will enable us to establish a core Elliot of Egypt immediately. You will see what this is about later on when we actually do that war, but once we get this mission, you should go ahead and take it immediately. This CB will last for 50 years, so no way it'll run out or anything like that, and and there we go. We also gain perma claims on all of these provinces right here. Of course, there are many ways to conquer the Mamluks, and if you're not into the whole Elliot thing, you can just go ahead and straight up conquer the Mamluks like we usually do. But when there's a much better option, why not go for it? So later, when our truce with the Mamluks runs out, I'll show you exactly what happens. But pretty much, this is the CB right here, Ottoman Invasion. Now that we fought the Mamluks for our first time, it's time to go back to the Balkans and try to complete this mission right here. Right now, after scornfully insulting Austria, which is France's rival, and getting a Diplorep advisor, I am able to ally France. Something you should aim to do. It doesn't matter when, since we don't really need their help strictly, but you should aim to do it whenever you can. Once you start doing idea groups, you can go ahead and unfocus from Mel. Remember, we started focused on Mel. After dealing with the Mamluks, like I said, it is time to get back to the Balkans and focus on completing the mission push to the north. Right now, I'm going to be declaring on Venice and taking these provinces over here that we need for that mission. Depending on aggressive expansion, I might also take some stuff down here, but these provinces, Corfu, this one, this one, this one, they're not that important right now, so we'll deal with those later. So right now, I'm going to declare on Venice for the conquest of Ragusa, for example, call in Bohemia to help, because why not? You're basically fighting whichever nation in the Balkans you have left to fight for that mission. Remember, don't fight Hungary or Croatia. Unless, of course, they've expanded into the provinces that were originally owned by the nations that we fought. 
And there we go, this is the event, the fate of the Crimean Canate. You may get it way earlier than me or way later, it doesn't matter too much, but if you've already completed this mission before the event happens, of course the chances that they become our vassal are almost 100%. And of course when you do get it, you will choose this first option right here, let us help this newfound friend, where basically Crimea will become a tributary, but not really, it'll actually become our vassal. And there we go, now Crimea is our subject. Actually there are March, not vassal, sorry, even though the event says a tributary. Or your tier 3 government reform as the Ottomans, you also have a very, very good option right here, aside from the usual ones that you already know. We have the provincial government system, which makes Pashas now also give us plus 33% local tax and minus one local arrest for provinces of foreign culture groups, basically everything that we're already assigning Pashas to, along with plus 15% tax, plus 25% income from vassals, which of course includes ALS as well, and minus 25% promote culture cost. Super, super strong. Of course, go with the provincial government system for your tier 3 government reform. And when you've beaten up Venice enough to take these provinces right here that they own, remember, not anything down here, you're good to go ahead and peace out. No money, no war ups, nothing like that. We're only focusing on the highlighted provinces from that one mission, so if you need to, go ahead and remind yourself. But there we go, that's my war with Venice done. Now to complete that mission, I just need one more province, and I'll be taking two from Herzegovina right here, which still exists. And actually, they're guaranteed by Venice, so looks like I'll be fighting them one more time. At least I can reset my truce with them. For your second age ability, you should take Ottoman Siegecraft. And there we go, I'll immediately be declaring on Herzegovina in order to wrap that mission up. I'll just white piece Venice since I want to lower my truce with them and I'll white piece Wallachia because we have other plans for them later on. Of course you may not be fighting the same nations but like I said what you're doing is working to complete this mission. And after white piecing Venice and Wallachia I can piece out Herzegovina and take their provinces and now I can go ahead and do the mission push into the north. And as we can see right here, every province in the Balkans owned by us will gain minus 3 local unrest and minus 20 years of separatism, which is super strong. We gain a permaclaim on the Carpathia region, which is this region right here, but more importantly, we gain the Ottoman Conquest CB against Hungary, Wallachia, and Moldavia. And of course, Moldavia isn't right here because they don't exist, but those are the nations you get it on. This CB lasts for 20 years, and it will enable us to basically conquer all of Hungary in one single war. As we can see, Hungary right Right here in my game and of course in your game they may look differently they may have been pu'd by someone shrunken down by someone but generally it'll take around three wars to take down hungary as we can see right here it's 270 percent worse score so i'll need three wars to take them down and that is so much aggressive expansion but with this CB right here, we'll be able to take them down in just one war. Of course, during this point, aggressive expansion may be a little rowdy, and we still haven't elevated the Mamluks, which means we're not going to be taking this mission just yet. We don't want that CB expiring. So, this is a mission that we're saving for now. After you're able to take that mission, it's time to chill a little bit, and depending on what year it is, you could wait for your truce with the Mamluks to expire. If you still have a while before your truce with the Mamluks expires, you can work on getting some of these provinces right here. In my case, since AE is pretty high, and it's only going to be 3 years until my truce with them runs out, I'm just going to chill and do nothing. But if you want, and if AE permits it, you could go ahead and take some of these provinces. Right now, I'm making 27 ducats a month in the 1470s. Not bad, could be better of course. We do have lots of forts that I do need to delete. Once you hit admin tech 7, it will be time for your second idea group, and for your second idea group, I recommend admin ideas. They have been changed in 135, and I do think they're a lot better now with less focus on mercenary things, but the admin advisor discount, just like the diplo advisor discount, is great. Plus one possible advisors is excellent. Another 25% core creation cost, along with the 25% we already have and the 10% we got from the Div Shirme system gives us a 60% core creation discount and that's without even admin efficiency so it's super super strong. Then we got promote culture cost minus 30%. We already have those bonuses so we're able to promote for super super cheap a stab discount, monthly autonomy change, the admin tech discount and the gulf cap especially is needed a lot. So for your second idea group, admin ideas. Of course once you hit Miltech 7 too you can go ahead and buff up your cannons as well. Once your truce with the Mamluks is up, it is time to go ahead and fight them and gain everything they own for literally free without even aggressive expansion. That is because this is one of the most powerful CBs in the game that we're going to use right now, the Ottoman Invasion, which is unique for the Ottoman conquest of the Mamluks. Now, as we can see, we gain 75% aggressive expansion, 200 prestige, and 75% cost for the provinces, but that's not important. What is more important is the event that we're going to get because we took this early mission 
and right here. So whenever you're ready, whenever you choose with the Mamluks expires, go ahead and declare on them with the Ottoman invasion CB, where our goal is to take their capital of Cairo. And then once we do take their capital of Cairo, basically once we siege it down, a very important event will happen that I'll show you once I go ahead and siege down Cairo. So whenever you're ready, go ahead and declare. I do recommend bolting it straight to Cairo with one army and then bombing that fort. And once you siege down Cairo, this is the event that happens, the collapse of the Mamluk Sultanate. This first option right here tells us that if we hold Cairo for 3 years and have 90% war score, so basically July 1st, 1481 is when it will fire for me, then we can white piece with the Mamluks, remember that's where the no aggressive expansion part comes in, and we'll create the Elayet of Egypt. We lose war exhaustion, we gain prestige, and the event happens for them as well. The second option right here is we don't do that we can never again create the AL of Egypt and we gain some CCR and province war score costs now sure these bonuses are great too but obviously you're gonna choose this first option right here so after you choose this first option it's time to hold on to Cairo for three years and get 90% war score versus the Mamluks so I'm gonna call in Tunis to help me do that so it's time to stay in this war for three years it's gonna take that long to siege them down anyway that's why you want to go for Cairo first and now that more than three years have passed since we've occupied Cairo and because I have more than 90% war score with the Mamluks, this event can happen, the fall of the Mamluk Sultanate, and we need to choose this first option right here, a sound plan indeed, let's end this war right now, basically we gain a white piece with the Mamluks, we're not a historical rival anymore, the Mamluks inherit all of their subjects, which you know the usual ones, Medina, Cyprus, and nations like that, in my case it's Dawas here in Cyprus right here, and the country changes to Egypt, and we gain the Eyalet of Egypt as a subject, a core Eyalet at that, and of course this is the option that we need to choose. And there we go, just like that, the war is over, we haven't gotten any aggressive expansion with anyone, and this is now our subject right here. And as we can see, it's a core ally yet, they will have a little bit of a high liberty desire, but we can get them in line immediately, and there we go, just like that, the entirety of the Mamluks is ours. Now that this is done, we can go ahead and break our alliance with Tunis, if we were allied at all, and it's time to go back over to Europe and take this mission right here, which will give us the Ottoman campaign of conquest, CBs on Hungary and Wallachia and Moldavia if they exist. Of course, don't take this mission just yet. We're only going to take it after we deal with Hungary. And now that we've dealt with the Mamluks, it's time to move on Hungary. So after you've gotten this core ally, it is time to take the mission push into the north. And we gain all those nice bonuses for the provinces that we've conquered. And we gain these super strong CBs on Hungary and Wallachia and Moldavia if they exist. If not, it's just claims. Now, even though you can use this CB on Wallachia and Moldavia, there's no real need since they're small nations that we can full annex anyway. But the real kicker here is that we use this CB on Hungary. Now by this point they may not be independent, they may be shrunken down a little bit, either way you are gonna go ahead and declare with this CB right here the Ottoman campaign and our war goal is to take their capital. This is gonna be an easy war but I am gonna call in France to make it a little easier, there's totally no need to call in allies in any of your wars as the Ottomans. So because aggressive expansion has died down quite a lot, even though we've gotten all of this land, after you take care of the Mamluks it's time to declare on Hungary, remember you have to use this CB. Once you get around 50 to 70% war score versus Hungary, you're good to go ahead and peace out. And like I said earlier, we're not actually going to be taking any provinces or anything like that. And like I showed you earlier, it would take three wars to full annex Hungary in my game. But by choosing this option right here, establish ALET, we gain all of Hungary as our subject for just 48.9 aggressive expansion and 60% war score. That is absolutely insane. We're also going to go ahead and take all of their money or as much as we can. And that's our war with Hungary done. Not a lot of aggressive expansion, pretty much as much as we got as when we full annex Serbia. And that's our war with them done. Now, of course, we do have two different types of ALETs. We have a core Elliot, which we can annex, and they're less rebellious, but they don't come into wars. And then we have a regular Elliot, which is more rebellious. We can call into wars, but we can't annex them. But of course, right after this war is done, you can take this mission right here, Annihilate Hungary, where we gain Diplo points, Irma claims on areas that Austria owns, and Hungary actually immediately becomes our core Elliot. And just like that, there's even more dev 
for almost nothing. I think now, finally, for those of you that didn't realize, you realize how powerful the Ottomans are in the hands of the player. Of course, according to that mission, we also got the same CB on Wallachia and Moldavia if they exist, and we also got claims. It's totally up to you whether you make Wallachia and Moldavia if they exist, your Elliots, or if you just straight up conquer this land. For nations such as this, that are super large like Hungary, of course it was worth it to make them a subject instead of conquering them. But for smaller nations like this, that you can full annex in one more anyway, it's totally up to you whether you straight up conquer them or make them an Elliot. And I know I said that word wrong about 50 times, sorry. <laughs> After you deal with Hungary, it's time to wait for your truce, if you even had one, with your former ally Tunis to expire, beat up some rebels, and after that, well, we're gonna go ahead and conquer Tunis in one war as well. By the way, right now, France has just called me into this war, but no big deal. Either way, once you're ready, you're gonna go ahead and take the mission Subjugate Egypt, and there we go. We also gain the Ottoman Campaign of Conquest CB on Tunis, which means we can go ahead and declare with that on Tunis as well. I do have a royal marriage with them from earlier, but it's not a big deal. Whenever you're ready, go ahead and declare on Tunis. Now, of course, because we do have the Janissaries, periodically you will gain events like this, which are actually not good for us. Everything aside from the never option right here makes them remove one of the privileges that we've granted to them earlier and instead replaces it with one that's sort of opposite to that that's basically good for them and not so good for us. So, of course, with any of this option right here, one of these privileges would get removed and it would get replaced by something else. And we don't actually want the other things. We want the things that we've chosen. So we can choose this option right here where Janissaries rise up and we do have to fight them and they do lose loyalty take a look at these maybe some of them that you guys get won't be that bad but usually you'll want to go with this option be careful of their loyalty and influence though for your tier 4 government reform i recommend either strengthen the demi where we gain these bonuses and guarantee demi autonomy no longer gives penalties or maintain balance of power it's totally up to you both of them are pretty good and that's a wrap for me on diplo and admin this is the policy that we get Meanwhile, France pieced out Genoa and gave these provinces to me, along with these up here. And just like with Hungary, once you gain around 50 to 70% war score versus Tunis, you can go ahead and piece them out and establish an ALF. There we go, there's all of Tunis, which would take us two wars to full annex as our subject in just one war. And this is all we own right now. After you do this with Tunis, they will just like Hungary be a regular ALET, but by taking this mission, you can also make them a core ALET as well. We gain Diplo points and Perma claims on some areas over here. Whenever your ruler dies, you may get another Janissary event where you can refuse their blackmail and we gain some negative modifiers, or you can give them a reward and higher wages 99.9% .9 of the time. You're going to choose this first option. When the Mamluks have more than 100 opinion of you, which they do in my case, and when they have less than 10% liberty desire, you should go ahead and hire a level 3 dip advisor. I'm gonna get this spy network guy, and with that, we can do the mission The Fate of the Mamluks right here, where Mamlukian administration will be removed from the Mamluks, a ruler gains some skill, and the event Egypt under Ottoman rule happens. There we go. Admin points, dev discount, goods produced, very nice mission right here. After that, you can of course get rid of this guy if he's too expensive. Whenever you have time, just like this mission, you can aim to complete the mission Repurpose Hagia Sophia, where we need to have an Inquisitor or Theologian of a scale 3, or Religious or Divine. I do have an Inquisitor right here, and even though he's a level 1, I can go ahead and promote them to level 3. And there we go, I am going to take a loan just to show you guys. And there we go, now we can take this mission, and we gain a great mosque in Constantinople if we've already built a regular one, along with a dev discount and tax, and Ulama loyalty. Right after you make Tunis your subject, you should aim to complete this mission as soon as you can, where you need to own 6 provinces out of these highlighted ones over here. For me to do that, I just need to fight Algier and Clemson right here, which is exactly what I'm gonna do. And I might even give these provinces to Tunis, why not? Now, if Morocco doesn't exist in your game like it doesn't exist in mine, if you're fighting someone over here that has Moroccan cores, you should tell them when you piece them out to release Morocco. More on that later. Now that I defeated Algier, I'll be full annexing them. And because I don't want to core this up, I'll just be giving these provinces over to my subject, Tunis. So there we go. So there we go. There are the three provinces that I took from Algier. As we can see for this mission right here, I need two more provinces, which I'm going to take from Tlemcen. But now that I've made Morocco exist, you can see that this mission, the Algerian Corsairs, not only gives us perma claims on pretty much all of this right here, it also gives us the Ottoman Campaign of Conquest CB on Morocco. So you could also make Morocco your ALN. 
but it's totally up to you. If they're small like this, you could conquer them. But of course, if they own something like all of this, if they're massive, very successful, you are definitely going to make them into an ALN. Right now, it's only one war to full annex them, but if they owned all of this, or maybe even expanded, it would be two or three wars. After making Tunis your subjects, you're aiming to complete this mission. So that's why I'm immediately going to declare on Tlemcen right here. And now that I defeated Tlemcen, I'm gonna full annex them as well. And I actually alt F4 and reloaded here because I couldn't take these provinces due to the fact that I gave this to Tunis. So now I'll give these provinces to Tunis, but as we can see, we can take this mission and we gain those permaclaims and of course the Ottoman campaign of conquest on Morocco if it exists. Right now I have a pretty long truce with Morocco, so that's why I'm not gonna take this mission just yet. But if you're ready and if you wanna declare Morocco right away, you can definitely go ahead and do it. If not, it's time to go back to Europe and take care of some nations here or finally push into the Middle East. Once you've completed all the requirements in order to take this mission right here, it's time to move away from the Maghreb and go back to Europe or the Middle East. In my case right here, I'm going to be declaring on Karakoyunlu. You can declare either on Wallachia, Moldavia, maybe even Austria over here if you want to, or you can continue to conquer these provinces in order to do these branches of the mission tree. So that's why I'm declaring on QQ right now for the conquest of this province, for example. And there we go. And now that Karakoyunlu will give me everything that I want, which is pretty much everything I have claims on, and the entire region of Anatolia, I am gonna go ahead and peace out. No pushing further, no money, no war apps, we want the shoes to be short, because we're gonna continue pushing into them. They have expanded quite a lot. And, after you've conquered all of Anatolia, you will be able to take the mission Unify Anatolia, where the event victory for the House of Osmanoglu happens, and we gain some permaclaims. These are the modifiers that we get, local manpower and monthly autonomy change in Anatolia, and permaclaims on the entirety of Circassia and the entirety of the Mushroom. At this point, as you can notice, we have three routes of expansion. We can either push into Europe, push into the Middle East and Caucasia, basically go north, go east, or go west, and right now we're shifting our conquest opportunities from one area to another, even though at certain points we were strictly focusing on one area, like taking care of the Mamluks, then Tunis, then this. But now you will shift around your expansion opportunities. Because I just fought over here, then I fought over here, now obviously it's time for me to move this way. And what I'm going to aim to do at this point, and you should be doing pretty much the same in whichever region you're conquering is I'm aiming to complete this mission right here, subjugate the Romanians, where we need to own five provinces either in Moldavia or Wallachia. Now what I'm gonna do right here is actually declare on Poland in order to take the area of Moldavia from them and maybe give something to Crimea and make them remove their guarantee over Wallachia so I can fight them as well. Like I said, if Wallachia exists, you could, you could make them your subject, or you could conquer them. What I'd do is simply conquer these nations, both of them, even if they existed. But if you want to go the historical route, of course, these would be your subject. Either way, there's my declaration over on Poland for the conquest of Bessarabia. And now that Poland will give me what I want, which is just all of Moldavia and them removing their guarantee over Wallachia, I am gonna go ahead and peace out. Of course, whenever you're fighting someone, you could be taking a lot more or a lot less than what I'm doing. It all depends on your playstyle, but this is what I wanted for my game right now. And that's my war with them done. I can immediately go ahead and declare on Wallachia since they don't have any allies. But once you do gain five provinces over there, you can take the mission subjugate the Romanians, and if Wallachia and Moldavia are subjects, they lose liberty to desire, but either way we gain manpower recovery speed income from vassals, some manpower, and army tradition. And like I said, I'm immediately gonna declare on Wallachia. Just conquest, not making them my subject. And now that my war with Wallachia is done, I'll be full annexing them as well. Like I said, with these two areas and nations, if they exist, you can annex them or you can make them your subject. It's totally up to you. At a certain point, you will also be able to complete the mission Develop Constantinople, where the center of trade in Constantinople gets increased by 2, so that's why you shouldn't have upgraded it, and it'll basically bump up to level 3, and we gain some nice construction and dev discounts. Of course, at any point in the game that you want, you can start annexing some of your core ailets. As we can see, I can annex the Mamluks, I can annex Tunis, I need to improve a bit to annex Hungary, but you can do this whenever you want to. It's totally up to you. It will take a lot of points, sure, but listen, it only took one war to full annex all of them, basically. So do it whenever you want to. And by around the time the Protestant Reformation comes around, your realm should look a little something like this. Basically, we started off as the Ottomans and started, of course, as always, by taking care of Byzantium and Epirus, which unlocks some Balkan branches of the mission tree, and of course, by taking care of the small Anatolian Beyliks, such as Ramazan, Dulkadir, Karaman, and Chandar. And after that, we focused on consolidation of the Balkans and of Anatolia before we could get to the really strong missions, which enabled us to form Ayalets out of Egypt, of course, before defeating the Mamluks and taking these five provinces from them, and establishing the ALL of Hungary and of Tunis as well. And by this point, by the time the Age of Discovery starts ending, by the time Reformation spawns, and by the time colonialism spawns, you should definitely own all of the Balkans and all of Anatolia, have the ALLs of Egypt, 
Tunis and Hungary and everything else aside from those three subjects and these two regions that you should own all of is a bonus. After this point of course you will continue to follow along with your mission tree because there are a lot of more areas to conquer and a lot more ALETs to establish. This top part of the mission tree right here you should focus on this mission and some of the development of Constantinople missions as well and of course when you beat up Venice you will be able to take this mission and then you should be able to secure the Bosphorus by owning all of these provinces right here. A lot of missions at the top are really easy to finish and they give super super nice bonuses but once your truces are up in each direction you want to expand and once aggressive expansion has died down you should aim to make morocco your alet or you should aim to conquer the remaining portion right here that we haven't conquered that's located west of tunis and of course after taking care of morocco right here making them your alet and maybe giving them back some of their cores if they don't own all of this or even if they do own all of this then you will continue to push into iberia from the south because there are some missions right here that sort of focus on granada if granada not exist if they don't you need to have some other stuff like transports and artillery over there in this sea tile but after that this focuses a little bit on the andalusia area and of course i haven't taken this mission just yet maybe you have maybe you haven't and these are the bonuses that we get from accomplishing it and then the one right after that and pretty much in this region you will push into the maghreb and push into iberia from the south over in the north you will go on to conquer austria as the ottomans did not do historically obviously you're going to want to focus on this right here you need to break the von habsburg and these are the claims you'll get basically on the entirety of Italy, basically on Northern Italy. Once you deal with Northern Italy, you can deal with Southern Italy. And then we have a mission right here, which focuses on us getting Rome and getting some nice modifiers from that, from these missions right here. And that's about as much as you want to go over here. Of course, you could push on into Southern Germany further, but after dealing with Austria, you're going to push into Italy. So these are the regions you're going to be expanding in after you're in this position. Finish off the Maghreb, go into Iberia, then go into Austria, then go into Italy. That's it pretty much for Europe and Northern Africa. Over in this other front right here, you should of course focus on pushing into Arabia and into the Caucasus and into the Pontic step further. And just a little deviation from that, you know, an inexperienced player as the Ottomans, you could easily own all of Carpathia, the Balkans, Anatolia, Mashrik, Arabia, Egypt, and the Maghreb. For a little more experienced player, if you want to go through a regular Ottoman campaign, not a world conquest campaign or something like that, well then you should aim to own Iberia, Italy, Carpathia, and the Balkans, the Pontic step Caucasus. Anatolia, the Maghreb, Egypt, Horn of Africa, Mashriq, Arabia, Persia, Khorasan, and then all four of the Indian regions right here. So pretty much this region right here, this right here, and then this right here. Those are the regions you should look to expand as the Ottomans. But after this point, of course, like I said, you can annex your subjects. You will, of course, do that. You'll continue to push on into Arabia after taking care of the Mashriq and the Caucasus. You could go for the Pontic step as well, then into Persia and some other missions right here. After we take care of Tunis, Arabia, and stuff like that, we do have missions right here which will give us those special ottoman invasion cbs on adal and yemen and nations like that if they do exist however these nations down here are never big enough for you to use that cb and make them your ALET. so that's why i just recommend straight up conquering everything else over in arabia the horn of africa and towards this way after you take care of some of these regions right here you will gain a perma claim on the region of persia as we can see right here so you will go on to conquer the region of persia right here then into khorasan and then into india and those are the regions you need to focus on after this initial starting situation as we can see by this point by the time the renaissance has spawned in my case i have about 1500 dev totaling vassals depending on your play style and depending on your experience level you should have anywhere from at least a thousand to about two thousand that's what i would say is a regular gameplay by this point so i'm sort of in the middle right here i think but but some of you may have expanded more than this. You may have gotten the ALET of Morocco right here. You may have pushed into Iberia already. Granada may be your subject. And you may own more in the Caucasus and in the Mashriq and in Arabia than me. Or some of you guys may own less. But either way, like I said, by this point, 99% of you should own all of the Balkans and Anatolia and have these three guys as your core ALETs. Of course, during this point, we haven't only focused on making subjects and conquering land ourselves. After the initial, you know, 10 years of us losing money, you should be rolling in ducats. This is how much income we're making just from our subjects. And this is everything else. So we do rely quite heavily on them until we core everything up and stuff over here and annex them, of course. But it's not only conquest that we focused on. You should have been constructing a lot of buildings. As we can see, I have almost all of the relevant marketplaces in the centers of trade that I own. A bunch of workshops in the high value trade good provinces. You should have aimed to build them yourself. And that's pretty much every trade good that gives you more than 250 current price. You should have built a couple of churches here and there, a couple of army buildings here and there. And of course, if you do run 
into trouble with governing capacity, which at a certain point you will after annexing some of your subjects, why not prepare for that preemptively by spamming a bunch of courthouses everywhere since they don't take up a building slot anyway. So that's how you should have focused on your economic gameplay along with your conquest gameplay. And of course, you will continue to follow along your mission tree right here. Every mission tells you very clearly what you need to do and in which way you'll accomplish it and what modifiers you gain from events and stuff like that for later. And you should, of course, aim to complete the entire Ottoman mission tree. There are some really strong missions down here at the bottom. Later, when you conquer every necessary province for this, you will establish the Caliphate as well, taking these amazing modifiers right here. So that makes this mission tree one of the best and it gives us some really, really nice things. Although these are sort of the missions that you should have completed by now. And these are sort of the missions that help you kickstart your campaign as the Ottomans. This is what we took for our first two idea groups. Obviously, this is what you're going to take in a blobbing campaign such as this or pretty much with any nation that you expand this much with Diplo and admin ideas. And after this, you have sort of two routes that you can take. One route is basically you're not sure how you can deal with the AI later on, because as you all know, the Ottoman armies do get weaker sort of in the later game, but that is almost a never a problem for the players anyway. Either way, if you think it might be a problem for you, then you should definitely go ahead and get some mill ideas such as offensive and quality for your next two idea groups however if you don't care about that and if you don't think that the ai is ever going to be a threat to you then you should continue on with non-mill idea groups such as trade or economic maybe even infrastructure or court to improve your nation or to build up economically so you can either take economic and trade for more money these for better governance or these for better armies the choice is up to you and then the fifth sixth seventh and eighth idea groups are once again totally up to you but those are the next ones that you could take after diplo and admin ideas and those are the ones that I think will help you out most in your campaign, depending on your three different playstyles, whether you're going for an administrative, trade focused, or conquest focused gameplay. This is what we took for our first three government reforms the unique Ottoman ones. And like I said, for tier four, you could have either strengthened the Demi or maintained the balance of power. For tier five, I think you should take military engineering. For tier six, I recommend royal decree. For tier 7, I recommend meritocratic recruitment. For tier 8, I recommend empowering the burgers or embracing the economic theory. For tier 9, I recommend Leviathan if you plan on playing with subjects the entirety of the campaign, but if not, then you should take this one right here. For tier 10, you should take either Letasemwa if you're struggling with GovCap or regional representation if you're conquering more, or you could even take divine rights for war score cost versus other religions minus 5% if you're done conquering pretty much the Sunni nations. And for tier 11, you once again have a unique government reform this one that i can pronounce for plus 15 percent reinforce speed plus 10 percent recover army morale speed plus five percent movement speed and plus 25 percent army jewel gain modifier this is a unique one and that's the one i think you should take for your tier 11 government reform and like I said, once you end up looking like this, go for Austria, go for Italy, go for Iberia, go for the Maghreb, the Horn of Africa, Arabia, the Mashriq, Persia, everything in India, Caucasus, the Pontic Steppe. And initially, by the time the Reformation spawns, your realm should look a little something like this. Let me know in the comments below what's the next nation that I should do a guide on. If you want to watch me do stuff like this live, you can follow me on twitch.tv slash redhawklive. And if you want to catch up on stuff from over there, you can subscribe to the second channel. Link is in the description. If you enjoyed this video, don't hesitate to leave a like. It really helps out a lot. And if you like the content and want to see more videos like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of them. And you can become a member today and join the Discord. The link is in the description. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time with another EU4 video.